The Peerless Assassin 120 SE from Thermalright is priced really well at 50 USD, but is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I release new videos every week on PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. So if you end up liking this video, can you please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel? It helps a lot. I will have timestamps down in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you, but I do recommend you watch the whole review. Now before I get into the overview of the CPU cooler, just to have full disclosure, Thermorite did send me over this cooler to review, but as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. There are five Peerless Assassin 120 models to choose from on Amazon.com right now at time of filming. There is the Peerless Assassin 120, the Peerless Assassin 120 SE, the Peerless Assassin 120 SE ARGB, the Peerless Assassin 120 SE White ARGB, and the Peerless Assassin 120 White. These range in price between 41 and 57 USD, and those prices are taken from Amazon.com at time of filming. Now the SEs are the newer models, so I'm not sure how long the non-SE models will be around because I'm sure they're just selling off old stock right now. Now what I'm looking at, or what I have and tested, is the Peerless Assassin 120 SE. So I'll start off by seeing what comes in the box. There is the heatsink and fans, of course. There is the installation guide. There are two sets of fan clips, one for each fan, a small tube of thermal compound, and the mounting hardware for both AMD and Intel. Taking a closer look at the heatsink, this is a twin tower cooler with six six millimeter continuous heat pipes. The heat pipes are not direct contact, but the cold plate is pure copper that has been nickel plated. The fans are the same, that being the Thermalrite TLC-12C. These fans are black on black, they have a four pin PWM connector. There are nine blades on the fan. There are rubber pads on these fans, but only on one side of the fan. The max rated RPM is 1550 and the bearing type is an SFDB. So a fluid dynamic bearing. Okay. The dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 155 millimeters high by 125 millimeters wide by 145 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, there will be RAM clearance issues if you have tall or RGB heat spreaders. So something to keep in mind. For socket compatibility, the Peerless Assassin is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets. There is no mounting hardware for Intel's HPC lineup. Now it didn't come in the box, but you can separately purchase the LGA 1700 kit. For AMD, it's compatible with AM4. Moving on to installing this CPU cooler, I will be installing it onto an AM4 motherboard. Now the installation between Intel and AMD is different. So if you are planning to install this on an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a clean, flat and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver. And since we're installing this on an AM4, there is no included backplate for AM4, so you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. So place the AM4 backplate flat on the mat and then align the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. With the motherboard flat, place the red plastic spacers over each hole. Then find the AM4 mounting bars and mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes on the mounting bars, then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers. Then screw the mounting screws into the holes on the backplate, making sure the mounting bars are facing in. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now make sure to remove the fans from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bar to the screw threads on the fastening bar. Then screw in the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once that's done, you can in install the fans onto the heatsink and plug the PWM connectors into the motherboard. If you need to or want to, you can use the included Y fan cable 
to plug in both fans into one fan header. And we're done the installation, so it's time to go over the fan's PWM range. So at 100% PWM, this motherboard is showing one of these fans at 1680-ish RPM. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at 390-ish. So these fans do have a very good RPM range. Now onto the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. The Peerless Assassin 120SE in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test had a CPU temperature of 71.9 C. Then when I let the fans run at full speed, the temperature only went down to 71.5 C. So really no difference between the 35 dBA and the full speed tests at 87 watts. Now for the 150 watt testing in the noise equalized test, the CPU had an average temperature of 78. So it did perform pretty well. Then letting the fans run at full speed, the average CPU temperature was at 76.9 C. So really only a one Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and the full speed tests. So not much of a difference there either. Okay, so what do I think of the Peerless Assassin 120 SE? First off, it's a great CPU cooler at a really competitive price. It performed really well in both the 87 watt and 150 watt testing. However, the issue that I see with this cooler is Thermorite has it competing against itself or their own product line. And what I mean by that is the Assassin King 120 SE is 43 US dollars and this Peerless Assassin 120 SE is 50 US dollars. So there's only a $7 difference between these coolers and only about a one to two Celsius difference between these coolers. So based off that price to performance, it doesn't entirely make sense to go with the Peerless Assassin when the Assassin King is less money and the temperatures are nearly the exact same. Now, I understand pricing might be a bit different in your area, so it really does come down to availability and pricing in your area on which one makes more sense. And don't get me wrong, both coolers tested really well, so I wouldn't say getting the Peerless Assassin is a bad idea. You just need to understand thermally there's not going to be that much of a difference. Now, if you're looking at the Peerless Assassin because you prefer the look of a dual tower cooler, then cool, this CPU cooler works really well. But again, that's a choice that you're making. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Um, you can check out these videos right here. They should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.